so much difficult it's really challenge to change uh, or getting the uh, actually skill one person to another that is the real challenge in colonoscopy so this is, this is the time we have only one five or six centimeter finger uh, once we use this on the perianal region and palrectal we check it now there is time we have a digital colonoscopy finger it's 165 centimeter with camera let's start to use it during the training period we tell all the surgeons that your initial your colonoscopy practice start a video proctoscopy and a surgeon never stop in the colon they will start their journey they will start their journey and ultimately end on the second and with some added training program structural training and courses that will enhance and encourage them to be a competent colonoscopist. So from the panelists, if you ever get any comments, then I'll conclude. Final comments from panelists. Uh, nothing final, sir. Uh, my just uh, short experience. Uh, I started performing uh, upper GI scopies in 1982 and uh, colonoscopies in 1984. Uh, about five, six years after I did my MS really. So in those days also I realized that a surgeon should have access and should perform the endoscopies in his day-to-day -day practice, which really brings out uh, uh, proper uh, attention to the patient and the standard of care. The scopies, uh, all, both upper GI and lower GI, they have developed remarkably over the last 30-40 years. In my days earlier, it was only a fibroscope and not the videoscopes. Then the videoscopes came, then the narrowband imaging started, now we have got AI and the 1500 series and all that. So we keep on expanding our knowledge and I'm really today, today impressed by the work of Dr. Veer that uh, we can even do the transcendental exigence very effectively. And uh, so I, I think that the science is uh, continuously developing and we have to follow the science and what it is uh, happening. It is not that the gastroenterologist or whoever is doing it. There is ample uh, work for everyone. and. Uh, I think uh, the surgeons can get a full training and can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. One again, information, Govindraj is the first one who he has started the paramedical training, giving a systematic training in the institution. And officially, in my department also, at least one sister was there who can do everything and used to stand there. And uh, bad luck that she has shifted to the government medical colleges now posted in ophthalmology. So that's a big problem, but I think that should be a start. But goes on here, you have the colonoscopy nurses who can do it. So I mean, obviously we have uh, we've got endoscopy academy now in different uh, areas, uh, Shanghai, and uh, I'm a trainer of the nurse endoscopists. We call it clinical uh, endoscopists now. We don't call them nurse endoscopists anymore because uh, it's a. Uh, it's, they're not technicians, yeah? they, they come as a sort of a scope and consult at the same time. So it is a rigorous process and streamlining. Uh, they go through the theory classes and uh, a simulation for quite a few weeks before they do the hands-on course and then the, the regular training process. So uh, I'm very much involved with that. We, in our institution, we have already trained four of them uh, the fifth one is starting in January, February, uh, and it's a very nice resource, as Vida was mentioning, is that demand and capacity. I mean, we, we don't have capacity to scope that many, but they're a very useful, uh, not only resource, I mean, they do a good job. They, they really do, do a very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you don't have any th things to say, then uh, I would like to conclude the session by saying that uh, actually uh, we, we are grateful to our gastroenterology colleague because they are doing this procedure for a long time. But we have started and started the journey definitely as a subject will do better in terms of intervention. Thank you very much.